and also Professor Emeritus in Kaidazm University, Islamabad. So Zabta Khan Shinwari for the keynote address. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Thank you. And now that's perfect uh, because uh, uh, the server needs a lot of uh, things. But uh, thank you very much, sir. I'm really grateful on behalf of the Academy already, Secretary General Saab said, and the President is here. We are really grateful for your sponsorship that you always do with the Academy, with the younger lots of uh, the students and everybody else. Uh, let me tell you, sir, that more than 500 people have registered online and they are from across the globe, uh, from Europe to US to China to everywhere. Uh, they are being uh, listening us. Uh, we are really grateful, sir. Uh, this effort that we are doing is mainly uh, with the help of the Chinese uh, government. Uh, I will call it Chinese Academy of Sciences Baby, which is ANSO, uh, Alliance of Science Organization, global organization. And we are proud uh, that we are the uh, founding uh, uh, kind of member, of Pakistan Academy of Sciences, the founder member of ANSO. In that respect, uh, I remember, I think President uh, of the Academy was with, uh, we were together when it was being uh, planned in Japan, Beijing, uh, this organization. So that credit goes to Khaled Khan Saab. So sir, once again, uh, thanks to the President for his uh, mentorship of the Academy and the Secretary General. Dr. Ali has played a major role uh, because we uh, ourselves uh, that also basically provides money to younger scientists and Ali being youngest. So he got that grant and he is the one who is looking after this. HEC is always there. Uh, they, they, they give us whenever we, we are in need of resources or of advice, we give them, but they give us it's a give and take kind of thing. Uh, just few words about it. Uh, Chinese government uh, feels that Pakistan Academy has done a lot of good things in the last uh, three years uh, during pandemics. And uh, we earlier too, uh, we had uh, several online hybrid and physical events uh, regarding pandemic. What happened, what we learned and what we expect, because we believe that this is not the first pandemic and neither it is the last one. Uh, so we have to be prepared. How can we be prepared for that? That is that you all will debate. For three days, we have group work, sir, and we will make recommendations, send it to you also, because part of this debate is on the education uh, facilities, how we uh, share, uh, how uh, we will be doing online all these activities. Uh, I'm sure uh, Chairman Higher Education Commission, uh, equivalent to the federal minister, uh, will be speaking on those issues that he, uh, being a great leader, uh, remained uh, from the founding team of Higher Education Commission. Uh, that is, I will call it his baby. Uh, so he will be speaking about that, what we can do that. So uh, several new variants are coming. There are experts sitting here. They will be telling you. Uh, but uh, in this one slide, I try to explain it to you, the whole theme of this workshop. On one side, strategies uh, to combat a pandemic, not only Corona, uh, it, be it the monkeypox name has also been changed uh, because of uh, this monkey, uh, people were a bit, uh, you know, so that's also being, uh, be, been changed last week uh, by WHO, now it has a new name. So the strategies from communication uh, to evidence-based practice to preparedness, to digital technologies, to universal health coverage. That whole theme, because we experience a lot of misinformation, disinformation also in the communication, what we call it, infodemic. That a lot of people died because of misinformation, because people were saying, come on, have this herb, you will be cured. Come on, have that therapy, you will be good. People were drinking detol and other uh, things in the uh, African region, and we faced a lot of trouble. Humanity was, in, even the president, I should not name, of a developed country said that drink that one uh, pesticide, you will be cured and people died. So that is what we, uh, I welcome Kaid Saeed, the CEO of uh, 
uh, Islamabad healthcare regulator. Sir, you please come to the front uh, seat. You are the next chair of the session. So, sir, he is looking after all the hospitals, laboratories of Islamabad. I being one of his member of the team. So, great, sir, to have you. So, sir, what we, we, we are planning is in this workshop, with the brainstorming of all the global players, we will be, sir, sending you the strategic document recommendation based on the practices of the world and to how to combat for the future pandemics, whatever we have. And we, we expect as a scientist, we believe because of climate change, biodiversity loss, when you lose something, that those uh, ecosystem-based uh, pathogen will find some host and you are the best host because you are very rich inside. So they will say, come on, human, you destroyed our host, you be our host. We need a home, so you are the best home. That's how we really, and the other side, this globalization processes, we may be confronting each other for, uh, uh, you know, for several economic things. For example, once there was a slogan that this dengue virus came from India, uh, in Lahore. And then we were saying, okay, then it will need a visa and passport to go back to India. It's just a kilometer, you know. So you cannot have this disinformation that, that makes problems for us. So that is what we should be having this globalization pro, uh, processes and discussions because no one is safe unless everybody is safe. So that is what we discuss. Yes, please, next. Uh, can I do it from here? So here, uh, another briefly, uh, the global risk that we are facing in the next decade to come. And the, if, if I focus on the top three, uh, weather, climate actions, and uh, human uh, environmental damage plus infectious diseases. So these are one or the other, if you say by likelihood, or otherwise if you say by impact. When you say the impact, then infectious disease has that impact that you have seen it in the last, you know, three years that you were facing, you were locked down. And I will be sharing with you, the Chinese uh, friends are listening to me today, the Chinese experience that we had, whether it was successful, zero tolerance for COVID or not, I will have one slide for you. Uh, oh, sorry. Now here, from response to transformation, how countries can strengthen national pandemic preparedness and response. For that, three basic pillars. One is react, prepare, and transform. React when immediately, you know, this is a public kind of thing. You do something for public and they may, you know, now Chinese, there are protests. They are saying, enough is enough. The whole world is enjoying life and we are locked down so many times. We go, if you go from one city to another, you have to be in the quarantine for 10 days, sometimes 15 days. So the, there are questions that this, this reaction, how could we uh, be doing and when should we be doing and then prepare and maintain for the resilient health system, social economy, uh, multidisciplinary inclusiveness of the society. How can you know this use of social media and other media and then monitoring evaluation and finally you have, you know, transform your society to prepare themselves for whatever is coming. Here, that was the China's uh, experience. Just in one slide, and I have kept only a few for you just to give a background. You know, now we are having a lot of protest in the Chinese uh, different cities against the lockdown. And the reason is, uh, but what can happen? Vaccination, basically, the data, this is the publication of November 1st, just last week, three, four days back, uh, that uh, uh, if, if we, nowadays, there are 71,000 daily recorded cases on 29th November, we have 71,000 reported cases. So you can imagine they still what they face and that zero COVID policy, whether it was successful, there's a question and then, Omicron that in fact 160 million people uh, uh, and uh, some of them, you know, uh, uh, the deaths that we are having, I have shown it here for you from 1.3 million to that, that depends on the reported deaths and all the data that, that you have. And finally, uh, about vaccination, whether the two vaccines, three vaccines, you know, the, uh, and then some people had even the fourth vaccine, 
what happened, what could have happened if all of them were vaccinated, specifically when we talk about the age-related issue, 60, 60 plus, 80, 80 plus, what could have happened? So all that data, and then finally, uh, you know, now China has approved inhalable uh, viral vector vaccine uh, that is being, you know, uh, one of the company in Tianjin is uh, being used. They, that's in the clinical trial. And of course, uh, mRNA technology. And if you talk about the drug, antiviral drug Paxloid, that too is being discussed, debate. <coughs> what could happen if we have availability of that for everybody or whether it's effective or not. So we will be debating. Finally, if we talk about little bit more, when we talk about response and recovery, preparedness and crisis management. So those are the three basic issues that we will be going to debate for three days. And then uh, uh, the subsection that we are talking about, the whole of the society response, for example, when we talk about crisis management, uh, governance arrangement and crisis communication. Basically, this communication is really an issue that uh, in our country too, I, I, I being a plant scientist, I know the, you know, there was a, a one plant which is basically for constipation. So they said, use it as much as you can. And when we people had uh, Corona and they used it, they were having diarrhea and they were, you know, be sitting in the washroom for hours and hours. And many people died because of that herb also. So you have to, you know, uh, and that man said, if it doesn't cure, come in UK, I will give you two crore rupees. So those are the issues that we really, and then when we response and recovery, we talk about that. So we, we have to discuss the social policy, health measures, lockdown restrictions, how much, when, where, whether uh, what in Pakistan were talking about smart lockdown, or all these issues. We have Kyle Saeed with us. He's a professional doctor. He will be speaking next session as a introducing this subject. And then preparedness also when we talk about risk uh, and critical things, etc. A little bit more about the academy's role. Uh, this diplomacy and international affairs, uh, our academy is really playing a great role when we talk about the global players, the people sitting here, the president and the secretary general. We, we work for Islamic World Academy of Sciences, the World Academy of Sciences. We had a major role. We were everywhere. We were present. We, we conveyed our, our case study from Pakistan to the international world. And we had a very positive image of Pakistan that Pakistanis really did something good also. So that is where... Uh, from scientific research to evidence-based policy to international cooperation. As I said, we may be fighting each other as humans. Uh, uh, what is we call it? The dog eat dog world. But sometimes, you know, human, human. So even in that scenario, we as international players, this academy is playing a role. And uh, of course, Higher Education Commission uh, facilitated. This is because of their sponsorship or their leadership that we did all that. Thank you very much, sir, for that, that we you enabled us to, to do a lot of things because of the resources that you provided to us. Uh, here in a very quick uh, 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 one slide again, uh, COVID-19 and future disease X, any pandemic, what comes in? Uh, what should we be doing? What are the basic things? Uh, I had uh, academy with the U.S. Academy of Sciences. We had a project. We still are working on that on One Health, where we consider human environment, biodiversity as one unit. And there is where if we don't consider all those three as one, you may face problem. And there is where interdisciplinarity of scientists and people, we come together and we discuss those issues from spillover from the wild to the human, from human to the wild. Those, those different surveillances mechanisms that we have, for a layman, I'm just trying to make it very, very simple. And then high risk reservoirs that uh, Pakistan is one of the richest country when we talk about the biodiversity. Reason being, we are the only country in the world that stretches from zero meter to 8,611 meters. 
No other country, Nepal has Everest from a little bit higher than, uh, you know, K2, but they wish that they could have some beautiful plains like Sindh, Balochistan, uh, uh, Punjab, and KP that you have. They don't have it. They wish for it. The sea, uh, you know, side oceans and the beaches that you have. So you are, sir, the richest in that sense that uh, working. And then interdisciplinarity, when we talk about artificial intelligence, we talk about human vaccines, etc. This is how we safeguard one health. Some recommendations here that will go to the final, uh, to the groups, and then they will be discussing how can we reduce the disease transmission on one side, and how can we increase safeguarding our health system. Those two increase something, decrease something, what can they happen on each other? I'm not going to read for you all of this. This will be given to you in your groups and then you can debate it, talk about it and come back with this. Some good things that happens, uh, again, uh, whether good or bad, you can debate it. The vaccine production or uh, some, uh, some uh, new uh, drug that you have, normally before COVID, the average Time was 10 years to get a drug from the lab, uh, what we call it, from the bench to the bed. That was taking 10 years. This COVID has given us something uh, earlier uh, from 10 to 24 months. And now we are even more excited. We are having doing things parallel and we expect that things will happen within a year to have something vaccine or uh, you call it drug rather quickly because you cannot wait for 10 years that uh, a disease come, a pandemic comes, a new one, and then you say, first you do animal, flana, 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 and then come on and have on the bed. So from bench to bed, that time is really being, uh, this is because of the efforts of you scientists, you the younger lot that you can do it now very, very quickly because of availability of a lot of equipment, resources, and things. Uh, I stop here. Uh, this, I think, uh, Let's debate it in some other session. Today we want, uh, uh, despite of this busy schedule, uh, the president also had commitments and the chairman, Higher Education Commission. Sir, both of you, I'm grateful that you stayed behind to just uh, talk about this very, very important event. Uh, I stop here. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much, sir. Um, now I would like to invite Dr. Muhammad Ali, who is the main